The tenth episode of Andor Season 1 is titled, One Way Out. The episode begins with Cassian Andor and the prisoners of Unit 52D on Narkina 5, finalizing their plans for a mass escape. Cassian is determined to act immediately, as a new prisoner is set to arrive the next day, which may be their last chance to escape. The following day, as the new prisoner is being escorted in by guards, Cassian seizes the moment to slip away and begins striking a water pipe repeatedly. After a tense struggle, the pipe finally gives way, and water starts gushing out. The water floods the floor, disabling the electrified surfaces that have been the prisoner's primary obstacle. If anyone attempted an escape, the guards could simply press a button and fry them. With the electrified floors now neutralized, the prisoners, led by the initially reluctant Kino Loy, quickly overpower the guards and make their way toward the exit. Cassian and Kino reach level 8, where the central control room is located. They force the guards there to disable the facility's electricity and open all the doors. Finally, Kino Loy, encouraged by Cassian, takes charge and rallies the prisoners. He addresses them over the facility's PA system, delivering an inspiring speech that motivates them to unite and break free. In a powerful and emotional speech, Loy tells the prisoners that they'll have no hope of escape anymore, that they're all being imprisoned for life unless they escape right here and now. He urges them to run, to climb, to kill, and to help each other. The prisoners respond with a chant of one way out as they make their desperate bid for freedom. As the prisoners jump into the ocean below to complete their escape, Kino Loy realizes that he cannot swim and will be unable to join them. He watches helplessly as the other prisoners, including Cassian and another prisoner named Melshi, make it out of the facility and jump into the waters below. Meanwhile, on Coruscant, Mon Mothma meets with the shady banker Davo Skuldun in her home, with Tay Colma also present. Davo offers to assist her in obtaining the funds she needs for her charitable activities, but his help comes with a steep price. He proposes an arranged marriage between Mon Mothma's daughter and his son. Mon Mothma is appalled by the suggestion and immediately rejects the offer, demanding that Davo leave her home. Despite her firm refusal, Davo ominously tells her, that's where you're wrong. This scene underscores the difficult choices and personal sacrifices Mon Mothma faces as she navigates the complexities of supporting the growing rebellion. Elsewhere, Luthen and Clea receive a coded message indicating that their mole within the ISB wants a face-to-face -face meeting with Luthen. Clea warns that it could be a trap, especially since they haven't heard from the contact in months. Despite her concerns, Luthen argues that if it were a trap, they would already be compromised, and he decides to take the risk. Luthen proceeds to meet the mole, who is revealed to be Lonnie Jung. Lonnie expresses a desire to leave this dangerous double life behind and protect his family. Now a father, he admits that the fear he feels is something entirely new to him. Luthen refuses to let Lonnie go, reminding him of the sacrifices required to defeat the Empire. Angrily, Lonnie demands to know what Luthen has sacrificed thus far. In a chilling monologue, Luthen lays down the depth of his own personal sacrifices and the ruthlessness he is willing to show in service of the rebellion. Luthen's words to Lonnie reveal the immense personal toll that the fight against the Empire has taken on him. He confesses that he has already sacrificed his love, hope, kinship, morals, and decency in pursuit of his goals. Luthen also acknowledges the fact that he has now become the villain, using the Empire's own playbook against them, burning away everything inside him for dreams he shares with ghosts. The episode ends with a breathtaking shot of the escaped prisoners swimming through the ocean, fanning out in all directions, their freedom finally within reach. However, the cost of this escape, both in terms of lives lost and the personal sacrifices made, is made painfully clear. This concludes the 10th episode of Andor Season 1. The 11th episode of Andor Season 1 is titled, Daughter of Ferrix. The episode begins with Cassian Andor and his inmate friend Melshi clinging to a cliffside on the planet Narkina 5, having just escaped from the Empire's brutal prison. They are disheveled and exhausted, their feet injured from their harrowing escape. 
As they evade Imperial patrols, Cassian tries to reassure Melshi, who is on the verge of losing his grip. Cassian urges him to hold on and keep fighting for his life. Their immediate goal is to find a way off the planet, but the surrounding waters make their escape even more challenging. As they make their way through the terrain, they encounter some Narkinians, the planet's native inhabitants. Initially, the Narkinians consider turning Cassian and Melshi in for the Empire's bounty. However, they quickly change their minds upon realizing that the Empire's presence has devastated their planet's resources, particularly the water supply. This moment highlights the broader impact of the Empire's tyranny, as the locals decide to help the fugitives instead. They ask Cassian where they want to go, and Cassian tells them that he wants to go to Nyamos, where Cassian's money is hidden. Meanwhile, on Ferex, a somber event unfolds. Marva Andor, Cassian's adoptive mother, passes away, succumbing to her illness exacerbated by the tyranny of the Empire and being away from Cassian for so long with no contact. Marva and Cassian's droid B2 EMO, who has been a loyal companion to Marva, is particularly affected by her passing. He expresses his grief, stating, I don't want to be alone. I want Marva which underscores the emotional weight of her death. Brasso, Cassian's close friend, shows compassion by staying with B for the night after giving in to B's sad eyes. On Coruscant, Mon Mothma is facing her own set of challenges. When Vel visits, the senator confides that she's in serious trouble. Mon Mothma explains how she used to easily access her family fortune, regularly withdrawing 100,000 credits each month without issue. However, this activity eventually drew the attention of the Imperial authorities, who began investigating Chandralan accounts. Now, she's suddenly missing 400,000 credits from one of her ledgers. Mon Mothma reveals that she has a solution, but it involves marrying her daughter Leda to the son of the shady banker Davo Skuldun. Vel becomes increasingly disturbed as she hears this plan. Simultaneously, Luthen is in a tense meeting with Saw Gerrera, Saw informs Luthen that he's ready to collaborate with Krieger and launch an attack on the Imperial base. However, Luthen warns Saw that the attack is doomed as the ISB has intercepted Krieger's plans and the entire team is likely to be killed. Luthen argues that allowing Krieger's team to go ahead with the mission, despite the inevitable loss, could make the Empire overconfident, causing them to lower their guard and potentially provide the Rebellion with a strategic advantage later on. Saw is torn between warning Krieger and saving the lives of 30 men or letting them sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Ultimately, Saw makes the difficult decision to remain silent, much to the delight of Luthen. The episode also features a thrilling space battle, a hallmark of the Star Wars franchise. While navigating his ship, Luthen encounters an Imperial vessel. The Imperial captain orders Luthen to disable his stabilizers and prepare for boarding and inspection. However, Luthen has other plans. Showcasing his exceptional piloting skills, Luthen evades the tractor beams and engages in a dogfight reminiscent of classic Star Wars battles. His resourcefulness and cunning are on full display as he expertly outmaneuvers the Imperial forces. In an impressive sequence, Luthen blasts the Imperial ship's tracker and takes down the attacking droids. He manages to escape unharmed as the distraught Imperial captain looks on. Meanwhile, Cassian and Melshi successfully board a Narkinian ship and head to Niamos. Once there, Cassian retrieves his hidden safe, containing all his credits and a radio. He uses the radio to contact Ferex and connects with Xan, asking him to relay a message to Marva. That he misses her, is thinking of her, and that she'd be proud of him now. However, in a somber turn, Zan informs Cassian that Marva has passed away, leaving him stunned and at a loss for words. As Cassian steps outside, Melshi asks if he's okay, and Cassian, still reeling from the news, lies, saying that everything is fine. Melshi then raises a sobering thought. What if they were the only two who made it out alive? He insists that they have a responsibility to tell the world about what's happening in the Narkina 5 prison, and suggests they have a better chance if they split up. With a heavy heart, Cassian hands Melshi his gun and bids him farewell, uncertain of what to do next. 
This concludes the 11th episode of Andor Season 1. The 12th episode and final episode of Andor Season 1 is titled Rick's Road. The episode begins with Cassian Andor, having recently escaped from an Imperial prison, grappling with the news of his mother, Marva's death. A significant gathering of the Imperial troops occurs on Ferrix, where her funeral will take place. The Empire, under the command of Supervisor Dedra Miro, sees this as an opportunity to capture Cassian, who they believe will return to honor his mother. As the episode progresses, we witness the tense atmosphere in Ferrix, which is under heavy Imperial surveillance. The Empire has established a curfew, and the townspeople are living in fear, knowing that any sign of dissent could lead to severe repercussions. Dedra Miro, determined to capture Cassian, has her agents on high alert, anticipating his return to the planet. Luthen and Vel also arrive on Ferrix to join Sinta, who's already been here for weeks keeping an eye on the situation for the Rebellion. They have their plans to eliminate Cassian to prevent him from revealing critical information about the Rebellion. On the day of the funeral, the atmosphere is sad but tense. The community gathers on Rick's Road to honor Marva, and her funeral suddenly becomes a very important point of contention. As the funeral begins, Marva's presence is felt strongly and her impact on the lives of those around her is as visible as daylight. As the ceremony progresses, Ferrix's anvil begins to ring, which catches the Imperial forces off guard as they are not ready for the funeral yet. B projects a hologram of Marva up into the sky, and Marva starts delivering her speech. Marva's speech resonates deeply with the gathered crowd. Although she is not physically present, her words delivered through the holographic message inspire the townspeople. In her moving speech, she addresses the oppression of the Empire and encourages the people of Ferrix to resist. This moment becomes pivotal, igniting a spark of rebellion among the citizens. The emotional weight of her message transcends her death, galvanizing the community to stand against their oppressors. Simultaneously, the Imperial forces, led by Dedra, are preparing to act. They have set up a perimeter around the funeral, ready to apprehend Cassian should he appear. The tension escalates as the crowd begins to respond to Marva's call to action, leading to a confrontation between the townspeople and the Imperial troops. The atmosphere shifts from somber mourning to a charged atmosphere of defiance as the citizens of Ferrix rally together. As the situation intensifies, the first act of rebellion occurs. Salman Pak's young boy, whose father was killed mercilessly and brutally by the ISB, throws a bomb at the Imperial forces, triggering chaos. The crowd erupts into a full-scale uprising, fighting back against the oppressive regime. The Imperial troops respond with violence, leading to a brutal clash between the rebels and the Empire. As the townspeople fight for their freedom and the memory of Marva, the Imperial troops open fire at them, causing a high number of casualties. Meanwhile, Cassian arrives at Ferrix and heads straight to the old workshop, where he finds an old friend. He urgently asks about Bix and learns that she has been captured by the ISB and subjected to brutal physical and mental torture. Determined to save her, Cassian resolves to break Bix out of the Imperial facility, even if it means taking on the entire garrison by himself. With the help of Brasso and others, Cassian hides in a room until the troops finish their sweep. He then makes his way through the sewers toward the ISB building. Amidst the chaos outside, Cassian seizes the opportunity to break into the facility and rescue Bix. They blend into the crowd and make their way to a starship ready for escape. Brasso, B, and Salman Pak's son are already on board, preparing to flee. A visibly weakened Bix, supported by Cassian, arrives at the ship. However, Cassian tells them he has unfinished business and won't be joining them. After helping Bix onto the ship, he says his goodbyes to B, assuring both B and Bix that he'll find them again, just as he always does, before parting ways once more. Cassian makes his way onto Luthen's starship, who is surprised to see him make such a bold move. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Cassian presents Luthen with a choice, either kill him or take him in. This moment highlights the complex relationship between the two, as Cassian seeks to understand his role in the Rebellion and Luthen's true intentions. Luthen's smirk in response 
indicates a deeper understanding of their shared goals, suggesting a potential for future collaboration between them. The episode concludes with Cassian making a pivotal decision. He leaves Bix and his droid B behind, promising to return to them, and chooses to align himself with Luthen. This decision marks a turning point for Cassian as he fully commits to his role in the Rebellion and the fight against the Empire. In a post credit scene, a startling revelation unfolds. The droid parts that Cassian and his fellow inmates were being forced to assemble in prison are actually components of the Death Star, the gargantuan space station armed with a planet-destroying superlaser first introduced in Star Wars. Episode 4, A New Hope. This concludes the season finale of Andor Season 1.